Now, in Uganda, the Constitutional Court is hearing an opposition attempt to annul a constitutional amendment which removes presidential age limits. MPs voted overwhelmingly last year to scrap the age limit of 75 years, meaning the 73-year-old president, Yoweri Museveni, who, was, who has been in power for more than 30 years, could seek re-election in 2021. Opposition lawyers argued that the amendment was smuggled into law and Parliament had not followed proper procedures when adopting it. Security at the court in the eastern city of Umbale was tight and some roads were shut to prevent any trouble. This is the first time a major constitutional petition has been heard in a regional city instead of the capital, Kampala. A professor of African history from the University of Ibadan, Professor Isaac Olawale Albert, joins us for more on this. Many thanks for your time, Professor. Thank you so much for inviting me. The President Yoweri Museveni has led Uganda for more than 30 years, but yet he seeks to remove presidential age limits. What do you think is wrong with African leaders who seem to want to be in power forever? Well, uh, Museveni is likely as being in power for 36 years now. Uh, he came to office in 1986 and has proceeded in eliminating all those who fought the first war with him in 1986. Now, he's one of the few uh, African leaders left. But Museveni is in the total control of uh, Uganda, and I wonder if the constitutional, uh, the constitutional court is actually going to make any big difference in the sense, in the sense that Museveni controls Uganda. Uganda is Museveni. Now, his argument actually is that um, uh, the elongation of tenor would enable him to manage his country more properly. I mean, so far we we we, we had uh, five years tenure for the presidency, and now it was is is changed to seven years. According to him, uh, it's in, in, impossible for you to manage any African country very well within just the time limit of five years. The question we need to ask is that this man has been in power for 36 years. What difference has he actually been able to make? Uh, to the life of the people in uh, Uganda. I was in Uganda when he was actually trying to manipulate the last uh, uh, you know, election in Uganda. And a few you know, countries, you know, supportive countries were trying to say, well, that is the best thing for, for, for Uganda. But the average Ugandan on the street asks us to look around for evidence of development. When you go to Uganda, you don't see, actually, you don't see the development that Museveni is talking about. So I think African, Af Africans have to really come together to, you know, look for ways of actually getting these people out of power. So you've said so much about this issue, but what do you think will be the outcome of a hearing by a constitutional court in Uganda over the constitutional amendment which seeks the removal of the presidential age limits? Well, I'll be surprised if the Constitutional Court does not actually rule in the favor of Museveni, because Museveni is in total control of that country. Several people have uh, been sent to jail, several on exile, several killed. And um, if the court is able to uh, pass this judgment against him, I think democracy would be experiencing a new uh, beginning in Africa uh, because it's, it's in total control of the country. But, but do you see the courts actually passing a judgment against him? Well, if we go by the facts of the, uh, of, of, of the case, there is no way, you know, Museveni can actually uh, justify what is, you know, you know, justify is is, is continue uh, state in power. But the question is, when this judgment is passed, I actually wonder where else the judges will go, because they will remain in that country, and I doubt if they will enjoy their tenure after passing any judgment that is against Museveni. Professor Isaac Albert, thanks for speaking with us on Network Africa.
To other stories now, Somalia's parliamentary speaker Mohamed Dawari has resigned following weeks of political tension. His decision to step down comes ahead of a no-confidence motion against him after he repeatedly clashed with other politicians. One area of disagreement came over Mr. Jawari's decision in 2015 to drop impeachment proceedings against the then-president Hassan Sheikh Mohammed. Local media says a lawmaker, Dahir Amin Jiso, confirmed and accepted his resignation, saying the political crisis was over. And in the Central African Republic, UN troops and an arms group have exchanged gunfire near the president's residence. This comes hours after at least two people were killed when the UN and Central African forces targeted arms groups in a mainly Muslim district of Bangui. Spokesperson for the UN says eight people belonging to the armed group's force had been detained by the peacekeeping force and ammunition were also seized. The Central African Republic has been unstable since the mainly Muslim Salika rebels overthrew the government in 2013. It handed power to a transitional government in 2015 as a country descended into religious and ethnic conflict. Still to come on the program, the campaign to improve literacy and empower young girls gains momentum in the Gambia. Do stay with us. <laughs> 